Christ himself you know, his name may not have been lifted up or glorified in this situation, but the way in which Cole moved still set a very loud and needed example, especially in the culture and the industry that he's in, for the people tuning in to have that seed planted of Ken Folk. What is good? It's your girl Ken and I welcome you to another episode of the keys and seeds podcast if this is your first time here my name is kendall and i share revelations i receive from the holy spirit as well as therapy that are helping me on my journey of growing spiritually as well as emotionally and prayerfully is able to help someone else so if that's content that interests you or if you're blessed by something that i share in this episode or any episode please engage and stick around now without further ado let's get into a new so okay so it's been a few weeks since this whole kendrick versus drake versus j cole versus everybody in the industry with rick ross inserting his two cents in between everything like a youtube ad right and i went back and forth about whether or not i wanted to add my two cents to this conversation and to some what i already did online right but i don't know like voicing my thoughts on social media and then coming on here and making a, a whole podcast episode about something are two completely different things right and so i'm like like i have a lot to say about this whole situation but i don't know if i want to make a whole podcast episode about it but obviously if you're tuning in if you're here um either listening or watching visually you know that i felt the need to share um just more of my thoughts here in a actual podcast episode so if you're tuning in visually first of all you can see that i have on my j cole shirt or hold on let me let me readjust myself if you're tuning in visually you can't really tell i have on my kod tour shirt i saw cole for my birthday when he was on tour um for his kod album he was on tour around the same time um my birthday was and so i had went and saw him in chicago you know i'm from indy so that was like right up the street and i made it a whole you know birthday thing with my best friend right and prior to that actually my very first concert was kendrick and so i'm a fan of both kendrick and j cole and if you're also a fan of either of those artists i think that I don't need to really explain why I'm a fan of both of those artists. So I'm not going to, just for the sake of time, right? And I say artist instead of rapper for a very specific reason, right? If you know, you know. Not only am I a fan of music, but I also am a music artist myself. I sing and I rap and I'm primar primarily known as a rapper and so i not only have a love for music but hip-hop specifically and artists who are just really great at what they do and it's more than just rapidly rap 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 for them right and i've always felt like you know kendrick and cole represented that right boom someone already explained why i'm a fan of both of those artists but moving on so drake on the other hand i've always felt like First and foremost, I'm not going to sit here and act like I don't have Drake songs in my library. Because I do. I am a fan of songs. But Drake as an artist, I've never really been a fan of. To be a fan of an artist means that you consistently keep up with all of what they have going on. And you're a fan of majority of their discography. And I can't say that for Drake. Also, for me personally... Being a fan of an artist is more than just being a fan of their music. I also have to be a fan of the person that I perceive you to be. And I've always felt like I never really knew who Drake was. But I also felt like how I perceived him to be was someone who is not really genuine, not really authentic, you know... I'm not really sure of who I am, but I'm going to play whoever I need to be in order to be successful. I don't know. I've always just got that vibe from Drake, right? And so it's crazy that for years, I've always said that I'm a fan of Drake's songs, but I'm not a fan of Drake. And people have always looked at me like I'm crazy. Like, what? Drake is the biggest artist. Like, 
how are you not a fan of Drake? And I've always said he's overrated, right? Like, I love his songs, but, or I love songs by him, right? But overall, like, I just felt like I could never truly get into or connect with Drake in the way in which I really see other people go up for him, right? And so to see this whole, like, beef pan out the way that it did, it's very interesting, to say the least, right? And if I had to choose a side or whatever, it's Kendrick. I'm sorry. Ain't no big three. It's big me, like he said, right? But with all of that said, as I have been on a very intentional journey of growing closer to God, right? First of all, like, I really didn't even want to keep up with the beef because I know to an extent, like, I really should not be still keeping up with what culture and what the world keeps up with and cares about, right? And I really had no intention of even listening to the Future and Metro Boomin' album that the Like That record is on, right? And mind you, Kendrick and Drake have been going at it for years, right? And I truly believe this whole situation is quite literally poetic justice. I will say that. But the track that, you know, re-sparked this whole conversation, right, is the Like That record on the Future and Metro Boomin' album. And knowing where I am right now in my faith and, you know, just where I am now, like, spiritually and just in general, right? Like, it's a whole lot that I just don't care about anymore. And there's a whole lot of music that I'm just not am going to tune into, especially if I know what I'm going to, especially if I know what to expect from it, right? Like, we all know the type of music that Future makes, right? Like, I don't need to hear that, right? Not really a, a fan of Future, right? So I had no intentions of listening to this album. But the moment I found out that Kendrick was featured on the album, what he say? I remember you was conflicted. I'm like, dang, I'm conflicted because I am a fan of Kendrick. But then I also heard that he was dissing Cole and Drake. So I ain't gonna lie, I did listen to the record. And then from there, I was keeping up with the disses and right until God tapped me on the shoulder and convicted me and was like, you don't need to still keep up with this. Or like, you don't need to be keeping up with this, period, right? But like, I really got that feeling in my spirit when Kendrick dropped that Meet the Grams joint. Like, that joint was dark, okay? <laughs> and after that, I was like, okay, I'm done keeping up with it. But then too, like, because I'm not really a Drake fan, but I also too feel like just not from a, also too just being from a place of not being biased. I genuinely feel like in terms of skill, like lyrically, it's not too many, especially mainstream, that can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Kendrick. So to an extent, I already didn't care about a, 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 a beef between Kendrick and Drake because I already felt like Drake is not, like, comparable, right? Like, I, I genuinely felt like it wasn't even interesting to begin with. I really was only interested in the beef because it's Kendrick, right? And then I'm like, oh, okay, like, I know you're not going to come as hard, but, like, let me still hear how Drake responds to this, right? Like, I do commend him for it, you feel me? trying to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Kendrick but like come on bro like you're not you're not you're not gonna win against Kendrick bro like you're not <laughs> you didn't even win against Pusha T let me see you push a T okay um but yeah but obviously because I'm a, a, a fan of Cole I feel like if anybody is you know someone who's able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Kendrick I feel like it would be Cole right so I really kind of was like hmm like I am like curious just to see how this is gonna pan out right and so we saw how it pan out <laughs> Cole responded and then Cole slid his way back out and I will have to say like the disc that he originally dropped I I did not feel that he was saying what he was saying with conviction like I did not believe anything that he said in the disc record so to begin with I already was like bruh still feeling like Kendrick said what he said. Ain't no big three, it's big me. Like, y'all can't go toe-to-toe -to -toe with me. Like, I already knew that that was true for Drake, but then Cole responded, and I'm like, bro, like, if you're gonna step, you gotta step. You can't just half step, right? So I was disappointed that Cole, like, even responded the way that he did, right? But the fact that he then sprung the block and apologized, I feel like that confirmed why... I felt like he didn't say what he said in response to him with conviction. But also, too, I'm like, bruh, that's not very hip-hop of you. Like, you don't engage in a rap beef and then, like, 
apologize after that, right? So, like, again, I remember you was conflicted. I'm like, dang, bro. Like, especially with Cole on every other record, talking about how he the best MC. I'm like, bruh, it was just supposed to be a friendly, lyrical, you know, toe-to-toe. And Cole was like, nah, I'm cool. Whole time, though, at the same time, even then, when he apologized, I felt where he was coming from. And so I say all of that to say that the perspective that I have to add to this conversation is really going to come from the example that Cole set in this whole situation, right? And what's funny is, is I remember like everybody was like, well, I, I kind of was seeing like mixed reviews too from other people like, uh, like, you don't do that and no hip hop beef, bro. But like at, at the same time though, as a man, I feel you, bro. Like, right. And so like, again, as someone who's growing closer to God, I'm like, I respect the fact that he felt like spiritually, internally, that wasn't what he needed to do. Right. And I can respect anybody that's moving from a place of authenticity instead of submitting to the ways of the culture or the expectations that others have placed on them, right? But it was kind of like, but bro, you did this the man. And then you said that you was going to take the song down and then it was still a few days before it was gone. It's already out there, right? But like, I don't know, like, I don't know. So I was conflicted. I did see conflicted opinions about the role that Cole had played in it. But once everything really started to like unfold, like I really was seeing people saying like, nah, I feel where Cole was coming from now. I feel where he was coming from now. Like Cole, he, he a smart man, right? <laughs> and so even with that being like a, a point that I'm, I'm seeing being made in the conversation, I'm still primarily only seeing Kendrick versus Drake with not enough people speaking on the role that Cole played. And so I really want to speak more from that point, but also add a biblical perspective because obviously I'm someone who lives their life based on biblical principles. That is what this podcast is about. So what I have to say and share might not be for everybody, but I do hope that you stick around. And I believe that what I have to share regarding biblical principles also goes hand in hand with the example that Cole set within this whole situation and I believe deserves to be talked about more. And so with all of that being said, the key lesson for this episode is learn from the foolishness of others and renew our perspective on what we consider to be foolish. And the anchor scripture for this episode is coming from Proverbs 26 and four, which says, do not answer a fool according to his folly, lest you also be like him. But they not like us, they not like us, they not like us. Okay, so yeah, so the definition of folly is act of foolishness, an act of foolishness, and foolishness is defined as lack of good sense or judgment. So considering the anchor scripture for this episode, as well as the key lesson that I want us to get from this episode, which is learning from the foolishness of others and changing our perspective of what we consider to be foolish. I, again, really just want to hone in on the role that Cole played in this whole situation that I believe is not being talked about as much as what the beef itself came down to, which was Kendrick and Drake. And the beef itself did not boil down to who's the best lyrically. Like, to some extent it did, but it got ugly. And I felt like it came down to a matter of who's better morally or like who's the better person right and as much as I love Kendrick 
as much as I am a fan of any artist that I'm a fan of, they are still human. And I'm human. So I am not God, right? And I don't want anything that I have to say or anything that I have to share and say. I don't want anything that I say or have to share. There we go. To come across as me condemning anybody, right? But at the same time, I'm not above being corrected just like no one else is above being corrected and even more so if you are a public figure with a platform i believe that you should be more intentional about the way in which you steward your platform right and so with that said i really just commend cole for using his platform literally getting on the dreamville stage the stage at his festival telling his fans like yo I know I did X, Y, and Z, but let me right my wrongs and let y'all know that that's not how I feel. That's not where I still stand, right? And I know the whole, you know, stand on that thing, you know, phrase or whatever mindset is like something that's, you know, going around in, in culture. And I was good for saying that too. Like was real avoidant, real quick to cut everybody off. Oh, that's how you moving? Stand on that, right? But God doesn't treat us that same way. God does not make us stand on anything that we say or do. To some degree, yeah, he does, right? Like we reap what we sow, right? Like every action has a consequence or, you know, a result attached to it. But God is gracious. And so if God wants us to repent, and come to a place of recognizing that what we may have once said or did is not okay. And he allows us the space and opportunity to be like, you know what? I was tripping. My fault. We should be given Cole that grace as well. And to know that he's in the culture and the industry that he's in, especially with it not being quote unquote hip hop, right? To apologize and a diss right I really respect and commend the fact that he did that because it's not something that you see and I know that it had to have taken a lot of courage for real for real to come out on his own platform and be like yo I was tripping right like I believe there's people who realize that they were tripping and there's people who are dealing with guilt but are too afraid to admit why they feel guilty because of pride, right? And God doesn't want us moving in pride. God wants us to be moving from a place of integrity. And regardless of where Cole stands, you know, with his spiritual beliefs, I believe that he was a great representation of what it means to move with integrity and so i just have a few scriptures um that i want to read or share that i feel also goes hand in hand with the example that cole set and then we're gonna get into kendrick and maybe a little bit of drake and then we're gonna wrap up with some key takeaways right so romans 12 2 first and foremost in addition to the anchor scripture right and as we get more into the role that kendrick specifically played in it the anchor scripture is going to make more sense, right? So first, let me remind y'all of the anchor scripture, which is Proverbs 26 and 4. Do not answer a fool according to his folly, lest you also be like him, right? But we're talking about J. Cole right now, so I just got a few scriptures for y'all. Romans 12, 2. If you know me, if you've been following this pod, you know that this is one of my favorite scriptures, right? Romans 12, 2 says do not conform to the ways of the world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind then you will be able to test and approve what god will is his good pleasing and perfect will this scripture quite literally applies to cole because the patterns of this world the culture that cole is in was telling him like nah bro you gotta diss him back and you gotta stand on that but cole was like that ain't how i'm feeling 
And mind you, you feel me, I don't know if he discerned then what the beef was going to come to or what. Um, apparently, like a little birdie told him, like, hey, bro, like, this ain't the type of beef that you think it is. It's not going to go down how you think it is, right? I don't know. But the fact that he quite literally did not conform to the ways of the world, the patterns of culture, telling him, like, nah, bro, you got to diss him, you got to eye. The fact that he went against that, he was transformed by the renewing of his mind literally saying that he couldn't sleep at night i don't know i just felt like that was just a, a good scripture example like right then and there we saw an example of what it means to turn away from what you know is wrong and to walk a path that may seem narrow a path that might have people looking at you and giving you backlash like bro what but at the end of the day cole has to sit with his own decisions just like we have to do the same thing right galatians 1 10 am i now trying to win the approval of human beings or of god or am i trying to please people if i were still trying to please people i would not be a servant of christ and honestly me just speaking for myself this scripture still to this day applies to me because i'm a recovering people pleaser but when you're pleasing other people, you're making other people an idol. God says that we should have no other God but him. So who are we as people for called to be listening to when he knows in his heart, in his mind, in his spirit, that whoever he prays to, whoever he checks in with, like if, if that spirit, you know, which is God, is telling him like, nah, bruh, who are we? for him to be listening to who are we who who are people for me to be listening to knowing that at the end of the day the people that i'm seeking to pleasing the the people that i'm seeking to please cannot save my soul we should aim to please god rather than seeking approval from others and i can only imagine how someone with a platform as big as cole may feel sometimes with balancing showing up authentically and pleasing their audience because to an extent if you don't please your fans you ain't gonna have no fans and if you don't got no fans you don't got no career if you don't got no career you don't got no money to be you feel me like to some extent like i can uh, i can understand the pressure that one may feel to please their audience but at the end of the at the end of the day who's for you is gonna be for you right and as i'm on this very intentional journey of god dealing with me and the type of music that i listen to all i can say is if nothing else i became more of a fan of who cole is as a person based on how he moved in this whole situation you gotta stay true to who you are and the values that you have even when you're faced with opposition and criticism because at the end of the day people are fickle if somebody stopped being a fan of him because he apologized or whatever you wasn't really no fan of the man anyways let's let's speak on it right two more scriptures titus 2 verses 7 and 8 says in everything set them an example by doing what is good and your teaching show integrity seriousness and soundness of speech that cannot be condemned so that those who oppose you may be ashamed because they have nothing bad to say about us again i just respect the fact that cole moved with integrity especially with the large platform that he has the fact that he came out and did something that was counter culture is an example that was set before his audience and even those who may not even be his audience, but, you know, may have been your Kendrick audience or Drake audience or whoever. And they're tuned into, you know, all of what's taking place in this beat. Christ himself, you know, his name may not have been lifted up or glorified in this situation. But the way in which Cole moved still set a very loud and needed example, especially in the culture and the industry that he's in. For the people tuning in to have that seed planted of it's okay to apologize and not move in pride. It's okay to 
speak up and use my platform for good. It's okay to move in a way that's authentic to me and what I value, regardless of what other people may say, right? And so again, just the fact that he used his flat, his platform um, in the way that he did, um, I just really respect it. And then lastly, before we get into Kendrick, I love you, my guy, but we, we got to talk about it. Matthew 5, 38 through 39. If anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to them the other cheek also. That man quite literally said, hey, bruh, whatever you got to say, I'll take it right here on the chin <laughs> or whatever he said. Right. And I, I respected him even more. And that's how we got to move, especially as believers, when we come from a place of knowing that. And even if you aren't a believer, right, like like I said, whatever you reap is what you whatever you sow is what you reap. And it literally reminds me of the fact that Kendrick was like, I'm reaping what I sow, okay? Or whatever he said. Like, he, he knew exactly what he was doing. And it was some foolishness. Even though I was sitting there bobbing my head to it, I'm push a T. Yeah. We got to talk about Kendrick. <laughs> As I was keeping up with all of the disc records or whatnot, I heard the Meet the Grimms joint. And my spirit was so convicted. I remember you was conflicted. Miss Eugenia influence. Yeah whole lot of that God tapped me on the shoulder and was like why are you keeping up with this God revealed to me that Kendrick was moving from a place of wrath he was moving from a place of pride and don't cover me self-righteousness and you know what's funny I used to move in that same spirit literally all three of those so it was easy to recognize but, you know, as a fan, I'm, you know, just bobbing my head because it's entertainment. But God is like, no. Spiritually, like, it is that deep. And we all have to get to a place of recognizing that everything in this world is that deep. It's not just entertainment, right? Like, we have to guard our ear gates, our eye gates. We have to guard our heart, our spirit, right? With that said... I find it ironic that Kendrick's solo, his first number one, his first solo number one, there we go, is humble. And we all know that he was coming from a place of ego on that record. And I don't think there's anything wrong as an artist, you know, to approach songwriting from, you know, different, you know, perspectives, right? Kendrick said, himself that humble was coming from a place of you know ego or he was like addressing his ego or something to that extent right but i just thought it was ironic that his first solo number one is humble and we now see the way in which kendrick is moving <laughs> or was moving whatever in this whole situation with drake and whoever so with that said i just got a few scriptures i'm gonna read and I'm gonna let y'all meditate on it. First Corinthians 13 verses four through seven says, love is patient, love is kind. It is not envy, it does not boast. It is not proud, it does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes always perseveres the way in which kendrick moved did not demonstrate love simple as that and if you disagree that's you but i disagree i don't even feel like i really need to explain anything more than that but maybe i might have something else to say once i read more of these scriptures right matthew 18 verses 15 through 20 says if your fellow believer sins against you go and tell him in private what he did wrong if he listens to you you have helped that person to be your brother or sister again but if he refuses to listen go to him again or take one or two other people with you i'm not saying kendrick and drake didn't have private conversations but as believers christian perspective right again going back to the fact that love protects we should not be out here 
using our words in our platform to expose or put down other people, especially if it's coming from a place of us having an issue with them, right? And I really just believe that Kendrick mismanaged his influence in his platform in the way in which he chose to use it and come at Drake. Now, from a fleshly human perspective, like, did what he aired out need to be aired out? Mm, right. But I'm I'm just here to give y'all Bible. I'm I'm just here to give y'all something to think about. Because this is what God led me to. James 1 and 20. For the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. I find it very ironic that Kendrick moved from a place that was very self-righteous of pointing the finger of, hey, I'm I'm better than you. I'm I'm morally right. But like it's clear that he was moving in the spirit of wrath, in the spirit of pride. It makes me think of the lyric where he was like, when whoever made back up with whoever, I was slightly confused. I can't even think of who he was referring to. But y'all know what lyric I'm talking about. Like, I'm sure Kendrick is aware to some extent that he deals with the issue of pride. And that's exactly the spirit that he was moving in. Proverbs 30 and 12 says, there are those who are clean in their own eyes, but they are not washed of their filth. Like I said, the, the beef itself was not about who's the better rapper. Kendrick was very much so out for blood. Like, I am trying to take this man down, like up out of here, right? But it's like, Kendrick, you're not perfect either. So again, like, you may have really had like some some issues with that man, uh, a, a problem with him, you know, behind closed doors, whatever. But again, I just feel like the way in which he went about it, I don't know. It just it, it wasn't loving. It wasn't kind. It it wasn't. I don't know. It, it was just very distasteful, honestly, even though, you know, sonically, you know, lyrically. You know, it sounded great. Kendrick is great at what he does. And I literally just have one more scripture that I want to read as far as Kendrick. Matthew 7, 3 through 5. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye, when all the time there is a plank in your own eye, you hypocrite? First take the plank out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. If you're truly at a place of focused on yourself and how you can improve, especially as you are walking with the most high, you don't have time or the desire to point your finger at anybody else and what they may or may not be doing right. That's self-righteous. I'm sorry. If we are to love one another, right? Like all of the commandments sum up to love God, love people. The way in which Kendrick moved was not loving at all. And I'm not saying that Cole was completely innocent, but he lovingly was like, yo, I apologize, right? And I don't know, like, I feel like I gotta over explain myself, but it's really nothing else to explain for real. Like quite literally look up on your own time, the definitions of wrath and pride. And tell me that's not the spirit that Kendrick was moving in because it absolutely was and I did write down in my notes um something for Drake I feel like what we can learn from Drake you know being mind you Drake is not completely innocent either right but I believe that there's a lot of Drakes out here in the world who may be you know struggling with their identity which is what Kendrick was really speaking to right first and foremost because drake is not innocent i did feel it to luke 12 2 through 3 everything that is hidden will be shown and everything that is secret will be made known i don't personally know this man but a lot of what kendrick was speaking to kendrick was not the only person speaking to it like over the years like from what i've seen from what i know i've perceived drake to not be a genuine person and again, everything that is hidden is going to come to the light. Just like I don't personally know Diddy. But everything that was hidden 
came to the light. Like, we saw video footage of him beating on that woman. Come on now. Right? But speaking to Drake and his identity and anyone else who may be struggling with their identity, Genesis 1 and 27 says that we were created in God's image. I can't help but still think about the humanity of Drake and how he might be feeling behind closed doors, especially after this whole situation, right? Like Kendrick was really coming for that man's neck, right? And I don't know, like maybe just as I'm at this place now of growing closer to God and I'm really like learning how to truly have love for God and his people, like I could see behind closed doors Drake really like and we already know bro sensitive like took a sensitive rapper back in his pajama clothes like let's talk on it like the control verse like even going back to that like back 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 to that right <laughs> back to back I like that record um I really felt like that was just a friendly like yo I'm name dropping y'all because I respect y'all but at the end of the day hip-hop is a sport right we see what came from that with big crit responding to it we see how a lot of other rappers that was mentioned responded to it right like i felt like that was friendly competition drake took it super personal and i'm like bro that's not what it was <laughs> but like us knowing like drake from what we've perceived about him and like knowing his brand like i can only imagine like how personal for real for real he's taking these very serious blows Hendrick sent at him and I don't know like none of us are innocent right none of us are perfect but I don't know I kind of am just reminded of you know his humanity humanity and I feel for him I'm not gonna lie and I just want to you know provide some encouragement to him not that he'll probably ever see this or hear this but yeah, like knowing that I've always gotten, you know, this vibe, this energy of Drake not being genuine, I do hope, especially, you know, with all of what Kendrick aired out, you know, whether all of it is true or not, I do pray that, you know, Drake is to a place of being his most authentic self. Because also speaking to um to the role rick ross played in it because i mentioned that he was in between this whole situation like some youtube ads he really was like coming for his identity too and i don't know like who does that sound like the enemy he comes for our identity okay um with that said though just some key takeaways and i'm gonna be out your way walk in the spirit not the flesh or ego and walk in true wisdom titus 3 and 2 reminds us that we should be gentle and considerate towards everyone we should not slander each other and to go against the word of god is to be foolish it's that simple and so with that said we should also be more mindful of what we sow including the words that we speak first peter 3 and 9 says do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult on the contrary Repay evil with blessing because to this you are called so that you may inherit a blessing. Proverbs 18 and 21 says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. Mind you, the Meet the Grams record, and I'm, I'm about to wrap up. The Meet the Grams record is what really like convicted me, and God was like, you don't need to be tuning into this, right? And I just want to read some lyrics from that. This man said, but truthfully, I don't have a hate and bone in my body. This is supposed to be a good exhibition within the game. But you effed up the moment you called out my family's name. Why'd you have to stoop so low to discredit some decent people? Guess integrity is lost when the metaphors doesn't reach you. Again, like, it's just ironic to me that you're talking about integrity, but saying like, Drake effed up. The moment he did, ah, uh, so now it's giving. Oh, okay, so since you stooped low, I'm stooping low too. Like, and I'm reminded of, <laughs> I think it was on Drink Champs. Pusha T had did an interview, and they was asking him if he thought he went too far with the with the beef that he had with Drake, and he was like, "No, ain't no such thing as too far." And me, before really like taking my walk with God serious, 
I'm like, I, I, I understand what he mean. Ain't no too far. Like, you went there with me, I'm going there with you, right? But like, as believers, those of us who identify as Christians and those of us who say that we love God, regardless of where you are on your walk, because it's a whole lot of people who say they love God and we all in different places in our walk, right? We have to get to a place where we are truly walking in the fruits of the spirit. There's no tit for tat when walking with God. We are to love one another. And again, the anchor scripture is Proverbs 26 and 4. Do not answer a fool according to his folly, lest you also be like him. They not like us. They not like us. Like him. Kendrick. So because he went there and he took it there, you got to take it there too. But we, we want to talk about morals and discipline and how we raising our children and, and who's the better person. Like, what are we talking about? And I just want to read something that Questlove posted since we're still, you know, talking about the culture. And then I'm going to be out your way and I'm gone. This man said nobody won the war. This wasn't about skill. This was a wrestling match level mud slinging and takedown by any means necessary women and children and actual facts be damned same audience wanting blood will soon put up rip posts like they weren't a part of the problem hip-hop is truly dead i don't know if i agree with the hip-hop is truly dead part but i agree with what he was saying it, it wasn't about skill it was about taking the other person down by any means necessary and it, it wasn't loving when you go so far to prove a point or you know prove that you're right but you're doing it at the expense of someone else i don't know i don't know i know where i was coming from with my heart <laughs> but shout out to j cole and shout out to anyone who is going against culture and is truly leaning into being set apart because that is what it is about again we should not idolize anybody but we should learn and discern with wisdom. We should learn from the decisions that others are making and discern with wisdom, whether or not it's something that we should condone and support or follow behind. Let's reshape our perspective of what foolishness is because I'm sure a whole lot of people looked at Cole as if he was foolish and then we see how it all panned out, right? Yeah. Also, let's not stoop to the level of anyone else. And, um, yeah, moving love. That's all I have. Bye.